Hey everybody and welcome back to the Tea with Mona Me. It is Friday, January 1st, which is the first day of the new year. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2021. We are so excited to be in another year here at Mona Me and definitely looking forward to all of the beautiful brides it will bring. That being said, we thought it would be super fun for this episode to look back on our 2020 episodes and some of our favorite moments or my favorite moments from these episodes. I had the opportunity to talk to some great designers, some amazing co-workers, and some great vendors, and I can only look forward to all of the great guests we'll have on in the next year of our podcast. So Thank you so, so, so much for listening, and I hope you guys enjoy this one. My first memorable moment would be our first episode. I got to interview our fabulous CEO and President Laurel Mungo, who I just adore. She is the perfect person to own a bridal salon. And she has this amazing, amazing wedding gown she got married in. It's pink, which you guys got to know her a little bit in that episode. So I'm sure just based on that little snippet, you you probably already know that that was so perfect for her. She is a fashion queen. So um, her wedding dress is absolutely fabulous. And I loved that she got a chance to share with everybody how she found it. I didn't even know how she found it. I had just seen the dress. So it was a great experience for me. And that is what you guys are going to hear in this first clip. You, when you picked your dress, did, was it, how was that experience oh my working, gosh. working in well, bridal it was, already? And we're talking about the second one. The first one doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, it was actually very stressful for me because we were we were in New York. I was getting, we got married, I got married in September mm-hmm. and we were at April market. And I had been told by a designer that was very popular at the time that he was going to give me my wedding gown and I was going to be able to design it. Wow. I'm not a designer. I was <laughs> very, I have a good eye. I can look at design, but I cannot come up with it. So that was a little stressful for me. Mm-hmm. So in going to the different design houses, because we would see fashion shows every single day back then, that was in um, 1990, Mm -hmm. a wedding gown came out onto the runway and I said, there it is. That's the dress. I hadn't tried it on. I knew that was a dress I wanted to walk down the aisle in. The only caveat for me at the time was I wanted to wear pink. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) I wanted to wear pink. And so I tried it on and I said, would you, can you do it in pink? And yes, they could. Yes, they would make that exception because the designer had very strict guidelines. Um, It was a SCSI. And at the time he had just come off of designing all of Nancy Reagan's clothes. Mm -hmm. So he was kind of a big deal at the time and he didn't do colors at all but they he agreed to do that for me wow yeah wow oh that's so (laughs) that's so fun but then i had to go back to the designer that had so kindly said you can do whatever you want and i that will be my wedding gift to you and say tell him that I had found a wedding gown. So my next memorable moment was having Mark Zanino and Brianna Ray Murillo of Mark Zanino on the podcast to talk all things Mark Zanino. If you don't know, Mark Zanino it has dressed many a celebrity, but he also has a gorgeous bridal line that Mona Me does carry. So he makes some visits to our store and I was super lucky to be able to hear a little bit about both of their journeys in bridal. Because of Bark's background in in architecture in college and then in dressing celebrities, which we did talk about a little bit on the episode, I was super, super 
excited to find out a little bit more about how he actually became Mark Zanino, a name that a lot of people know in the fashion world. In this clip, you'll hear about how he was given an awesome opportunity by another designer to kind of come into his own and to create the start of Mark Zanino. So here it is. So what was the first piece that you created? Like that you ever, you went through the whole process well, with? Well, the, the, the first notable thing that I think I ever did that actually had my name on it. I was working with Nolan and it's, it's how my label got created. Mm -hmm. um, things were progressing and I designed a collection that Nolan hated, really hated it. And so I'm like, <laughs> but I believe in it. And he's like, no, my name will not go on this. And he said, you believe in it. You put your name on it. So I did. So I designed a more conservative collection for him. And then I had my collection and Sophia Loren came in she flew in. It was for the um, Oscars. And, and so we had the two racks of clothes and you know, Nolan said, just let her walk in and see which rack she goes to. And so she went over to my new rack and picked out a dress. And it was a dress that was, um, it just had a one sheer layer of chiffon. So you could see her legs, everything through it. And it had a, a lace over nude mini skirt, little strapless mini dress underneath. Mm -hmm. But it was just the beginning of sheer things being sheer like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and Nolan was just like, he, Sophia said, this is what I'm going to wear. And, and and Nolan said, you can see your legs right through it. It's like, you know, you didn't put a slip on. And she was like, what's wrong with my legs? And then also being European, mm -hmm. she's used to pushing the envelope. And her body looked amazing. Mm -hmm. And so she wore that dress. And, and you know, never kept saying, who are you wearing? And she would say, Mark Zanino. Because Nolan said, do not mention my name. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, you know. Tell them my name. And so that's really what launched my label way back when. And Sophia was the first one. On episode three, creating your perfect look, I got a chance to sit down with our master stylist, Tina McLean. Tina is so good at what she does. And she really has a process that I believe is entirely her own. She researches like no other. She is so into style. She is just a great consultant. And I loved that she was able to tell you guys more about her process and about how she views building a look. So in this clip, Tina talks a little bit about how she doesn't necessarily ever saying no to somebody. She goes in to talk about how instead of telling people why they can't, she likes to draw on their assets and their the things they love about themselves to build a look that they feel great in and they look great in. I just love how she explains it. And that's why it's one of my most memorable moments. What is your route with that? Well, I get asked this question from my brides from time to time that um, have, has a bride ever bought something that you thought was just completely wrong for her? And I would say no in all my years of doing this that hasn't happened because we find a w if if we find a way to to make it work or go in another direction that's going to work even better. So let's say I do have a 4 foot 11 bride who wants a big giant ball gown. Not that she couldn't do a ball gown, but maybe one that is minimal with details. Mhm. Mm so that you always want the focus to be your face first. You want everyone to look at you as a whole and see the beauty of your face first and say what a beautiful bride you are, not so much what a beautiful dress that is. People will say what a beautiful dress that is, but they want to see you as a whole. That you, you want to be wearing the dress and not the dress wearing you. So it's a gentle conversation that I have and uh, just gently guiding the bride to see a shape that's going to be more flattering. It, you know, let's, what are your, what are your best assets? Is it, is it a small waist? Is it your, is it your bust? Um, you have, you have a nice round behind, mm -hmm. um, shapely hips. Let's pull out the best features and emphasize them. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, I, I'm, I'm not totally against if, if somebody, um, is adamant about wearing a certain cut, but like you said, let's, let's try to tailor it to make to make it even better and show off their best features. 
Erin Cole has had a long-standing relationship with Monami. She began here as a consultant only to begin her brand, grow her brand, and then become a designer that we actually carried accessories and dresses, bridal gowns. So having her on the podcast was super great. She not only talked about some of the cool things I feel like she discusses in her own memoir that she has, that has done really well, but she also talked to me about how she started in this all. I love to hear how designers start and what they're doing because I feel like everybody has their own journeys. So in this clip, you're going to hear about how Erin's bold move ended up paying off for her or well, how was that the interesting thing was while i was working here i did head up the accessory department as well as um doing bridal and i felt like wow we're really kind of missing it because i kept seeing us selling really beautiful dresses to brides and working with those brides and i kept looking at the accessories we were selling them and they just weren't lining up to the same level of beauty as the dresses we were selling mm -hmm. So on my spare time, when I would get home, I go, you know, I'm just going to try a couple things. And so I bought fabric with the paycheck I had and I just the extra leftover. I just um, ended up buying fabric and just sort of accumulated a bunch of little accessories and things that I thought would look really pretty. And then I just started putting those things together. I've always been super creative mm -hmm. um, and that. I, area I really thrive in. So um, I kind of just started working on the accessory area and I built a little collection and probably about, you know, 70 pieces. And I came in and explained that I felt that I loved my job, but while I loved my job, I wanted to help them make more money. So mm -hmm. let's, let's do this. So I sort of presented my collection, the little small collection that I created to them and thinking, you know, maybe they'll buy a couple of pieces and maybe they'll believe it and maybe they won't. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, they ended up buying every single item I made, wow. which was so amazing. Those, all the 70 pieces? Yes, everything. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it that's, was really cute. That's so awesome. I was really happy that they believed in it and very um, grateful that right away everything started selling and doing really well. So then I just started building and building and building. But I worked here for a while while I was doing, um, you know, the outside work and the extra things on the side. I still worked here. But then as it got busier, I um, decided to resign so that I could really put my heart and soul into um, making more creations and designing things um, that I could really think out and um, just create a really beautiful little collection. So that's what I did. So twice on the podcast, I was able to do some really fun ratings with Megan Autry, and I hope to do more in the future. It is super, super fun rating things with Megan Autry. I love it. It is really great. And so the first time we rated celebrity wedding gowns, which I feel like is just an essential rating for a, a wedding podcast, a bridal podcast. But the second time we rated wedding music. And one of my most memorable moments is singing Jagged Edge, Let's Get Married remix on the podcast with Megan Autry. We weren't karaokeing, but here's a little snippet of what it sounded like. Cool, because I have entrance songs, but I didn't know if you had already put it. So I was like, did we skip it? But OK, I have entrance songs. So my number one song, OK, number one, it'll always be number one is Let's Get Married Remix by Jagged Edge. You know that song? Yes, I do. Meet me at the yes, altar yes, in your dress. dress. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so we were told that we can we can sing the song, so we can't play them for you. So now we're bringing it out. <laughs> yes, that song is my we ain't favorite. You younger, so we might as well do yes. it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get I, married. I love that song. That's such a good one. I love that song. I jammed that song almost daily in my car. I'm like, I can't wait till I get married so I can play this song. Speaking of fun episodes with some of my amazing coworkers, our Mona Me staff, the next most memorable moment I would like to say is the episodes I got to do with Betsy. So I did two episodes with Betsy. The first one we did was the plus size FAQs where we went super, super in depth on all plus size 
questions that we tend to get. And the second episode I did with Betsy was where we talked about most memorable brides. I do want to say, I listened back to the plus size episode and it was memorable to me because I feel like Betsy is so passionate about inclusivity, especially in the bridal space. And she is so, so, so knowledgeable about that particular part of the bridal space, meaning, you know, plus size. We both are super passionate about it. So I, there's no one else I would have rather talked to about that. I think she did such an amazing job. And I really encourage you guys to go back and listen to the episode if you are plus, or if you're looking to learn more about plus size bridal. So the second episode is where I took the clip. Betsy has been here at Mon Ami for a while, and we have both seen so many brides. We have some great stories about them, which is why the most memorable brides episode was super fun to me. Betsy, however, did one of the coolest, most unique wedding looks that I have seen us do. It was just so, so beautifully executed And we were truly able to take this bride's vision and bring it to reality. I'm going to let Betsy tell you guys more about this particular bride and why she was so memorable. My first most memorable bride um, was gorgeous. And she had this very, like, all black aesthetic. She wasn't, she's not goth necessarily. She just really likes all black and everything in her her aesthetic is black. Mm-hmm. Um, if you like look at her Instagram, everything is black. Her room is black. Her nails are always black. And she had come in kind of, I think she might've been a walk-in, but she had come in from shopping at several different salons throughout the day, uh, bridal salons, bridal boutiques. Um, and they had told her that essentially she was never going to find a black dress, that her only option was to either get a prom dress and call it her wedding dress. And that was it for her. So she was, she was telling this to me and I was appalled first of all, because I strongly believe that a bride can wear anything and she wants and look fabulous. Right. And I think we talked about that a little bit last time. Um, basically if you have a bridal dream, make it come true. Right. And we do have designers that will do black dresses. Mm -hmm. So she was almost crying at the idea that she might not be able to find a black dress that felt like a bridal gown. And I told her, okay, everything's going to be okay. You've come to the right place. We have dresses that we can do in black. And she was really flexible. Uh, we found her a dress that she absolutely loved. And it was it was in ivory, obviously. But we ordered it in black. And oh my gosh, those pictures. Have you seen them? I have seen the pictures. The incredible. pictures are incredible. I show the pictures to my friends. And she wasn't my bride. I do not know her. Um, but her pictures were so amazing everything i think she had pompous grass she did and she had a black veil and we custom made that here Mm -hmm. we custom made her black Black veil veil, black bugle beads on black choker Um, it was crazy it was insane and it was this beautiful gorgeous sparkly sparkle everywhere all black yes and it was done just the way you think about it it was done Beyond, I think, anybody's. Yes. Seeing that dress come in was like Christmas morning. So my next most memorable moment was sitting down with Lauren Dietrich of L. Gerritsen and discussing how she feels about brides and accessories. She said something that really stuck with me and that in listening back to our episode, I was just like, wow. I hope that brides understand kind of what she was saying. She spoke about tying together a look and how when a bride puts together a look a certain way, it seems like it's just her. You see her in it. So obviously she said it. I can't explain it any better than she did. So I'm going to let the clip go ahead and play. Hmm. It's, you know, it's, I think the best part is, is that when you see these brides and when you work with them, they really do all have, you know, a different dress and Mm -hmm. it's unique to them. Mm -hmm. Um, my best friend got married in a beautiful Lozaro gown, but she has, you know, amber strawberry blonde hair. And we did this amazing custom rose gold beading and it was so unique to her. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the special thing is that each gown is so significant to them and really unique to their own style. Um, 
But that to me is the benefit at the end of the day, when we put the whole look together, it's like, you see that look on them and you just know, you're like, that dress was made for her. That look, you know, those accessories that really all came together and that look was really made for her. So those were all of my most memorable moments from our first year of podcasting, our first year of the tea with Mona Me. Um, it has been so amazing and we have had a great time. We have more great episodes planned for 2021, more awesome guests and more information about this amazing space we call the bridal industry. So we thank you so much for tuning in with us on New Year's or after New Year's, whenever you're listening to this. We took a little break for Christmas last week, but we will be back next week per usual Friday. If you love our podcast, please give us a rating on Apple Podcasts and subscribe to us on Spotify. You can also find us on socials. Okay, here we go. At Mona Me Bridal Salon on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, TikTok, YouTube, SoundCloud, and all the bridal web- websites, The Knot, Wedding Wire, all of that. And I think that that's all. But if I miss anything, please, you know, it's just at Mona Me Bridal Salon. Really everything. So until next week, happy new year once again, and we will talk to you later. Bye. Bye.